If you knew that one belief eliminated from your brain could change the course of your reality, would you want that? It's not for everyone, only the brave. Those who want to own their life like the powerful leaders they were born to be. A pivotal moment can change everything. Now, here is the host of Crossroads to Awakening show, Wendy Paquette. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Crossroads to Awakening show. I am Wendy Pocket, your host, and I'm a holographic mind reprogrammer, helping women stuck at a crossroads awaken to their true selves and change the world from where they stand. I believe as a high-frequency human, you see your life as a direct reflection of the programs that are etched into your brain and can be easily shifted when you see your truth for what it is. So if you want to access your true self, just reach out to me. Let's talk about it. Go on Facebook and find me at at Crossroads to Awakening Show. So today, welcome from wherever you're listening to. We have a super fun show happening. It's called Leadership Secrets Revealed. Yeah. Episode 15 is so much fun. I have the most amazing guest today, my personal best friend, Kathleen Reeson of the Profit Launch Club. She is a master when it comes to breaking through in leadership, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Trust me, you want to be in the room with her at any time for anything. So what we're doing today is we're going to reveal leadership secrets to break through every time in your life and what that looks like. And then we also have a secret that no one talks about, something that occurs in your reality as a regular thing on a regular everyday basis you know, space when you wake up in the morning till you go to bed at night. And if you're leaning into some kind of leadership in the world and looking to shift it or you. So as we lean in, I'm going to bring Kathleen right in with me because listen, there's no, we have no more fun together than talking about business and leadership and life. So welcome Kathleen. Hi, so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yay, so excited to have you here. I mean, this is going to feel a lot like what our regular conversations are like on a <laughs> on an everyday exactly. basis, which makes it so much fun. I'm excited. So although it probably has just a little more structure, or maybe not, I don't even know. But I, I titled today's episode Leadership Secrets Revealed because you and I know something about leadership. We're talking, we can talk any kind of leadership because you've been in training like corporate leaders for a while and we're leaders as mothers as sisters as daughters and just in our lives in general we've also done leadership training so there's something that we use all the time that causes us to be uh i don't know have a secret weapon i guess in our back pocket because it's not something they teach per se but it's something that we use and i think everyone gets to know what it is so as you and I are going to have this conversation. We're going to reveal it right out of the gate so that we can just dive right in. Sound good? Sounds great. Yeah. So let's first talk about who you are and what you're up to. Like, I want to know, I want everyone to know what Kathleen Reeson is up to right now in the world. <laughs> yes. Well, so I'm a loving, authentic, abundant woman, first and foremost. That's what I stand for. So you know that. Uh, yeah. And I am... I'm a mom, I am a wife, uh, and I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a daughter, and I have a lot of things that I have, a lot of, a lot of nouns, uh, and most importantly, the things that light me up, besides my family, uh, is seeing possibility in the world. When someone says, I think I can, or they're even at that space of, I'm not really sure what it looks like, so they don't know what they don't know, but yet they're curious, that's where I light up, and I get to move them into the, I know that I know. So I don't know that I don't know going into that. I know that I know. And that is the space of how we hold our leadership to move from those from I don't know that I don't know to I know that I know. And I love talking about that, especially when it's an entrepreneurship space, when it's talking about creation of something. Uh, that's where it just I get super excited. And that's where I can throw in a lot of the, the business knowledge that I have. I've run businesses for 12 years. Uh, currently, I, I run, I'm the founder of Profit Launch Club. I have my own radio show on Inspired Choices Network, Profit Launch with Kathleen Reeson, where we talk about the five steps to creating a six-figure plus business and creating consistent income. It's really powerful because after having done that multiple times in businesses, there's nothing better than creating your income stream uh, and not relying on a paycheck. So, yeah, that's a killer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I so. All those 
fun things wouldn't be possible if you didn't stand in your leadership. And that's yes. one of the things we can talk about today because, you know, it takes a powerful human to decide, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur or I want to change the world or I want to be the leader in my family or my life. And in order to be that, there's a certain aspect of um, willingness to stand out, willingness to go up against a grain, something that doesn't quite feel like it's aligned to who you are as a human, or if it's maybe it's not serving you or your family or your business or someone else's business if you are an employee. So let's lean into, I, I call this like leadership secrets revealed because there's one thing I really, really want to talk about. And it's in my realm. It's the energetic, it's in the energetic realm. It's in the spaces inside your mind, inside our universe or multiverse where we create from. And so where we create from is where we lead from. Because in order to create something, you get to access a space that no one else has been to. And so I love leadership so much. It's changed my life in a million different ways. And that's how you and I met. We met in, I believe it was January of 2019. So it's like a year and a half. And we were like fast friends ever since the magical moment of coming together in a space that could be no more magical than leadership in a leadership program. So my big secret that no one talks about with standing in your leadership in your life is dun, da, 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 intuition. <laughs> like through <laughs> the cheers of the crowd and the intuition that we all possess, right? We were born with it and we carry it through our lives, whether we acknowledge it or not. And that's the best piece because even if you think, oh, I don't have that, like you don't have to buy it. (laughs) You don't have to like go find it. You don't have to hunt for it, nor do you have to find out what it looks like or, you know, that you may or may not have it in school. Like it's, it's nothing that is something that you have to go find. It is something that you're born with. And a lot of us were born leaders. I mean, whether we know it or not, if you're, you know, a mother, a friend, whatever you be in your reality you're leading something, right? Even if it's making the dinners at the same time every night so everyone's supported, you're leading something. So what I want to bring to the table with you, because your secret power is certainly the secret of intuition, because you're an insanely magical human when it comes to breaking through anything in business, in life, in leadership. Can you tell us how you use this secret power of intuition can you tell me well maybe tell me first if you all if you even believed that that was possible let's start there yeah well (laughs) such a great question and okay did i think that it was possible uh you know i now i can see that i've always used my intuition but i wouldn't have labeled it as that uh and there was a there's a piece of the last even the last few years of trusting myself at, at such a big level so i'll tell you that the first time that I really became aware of intuition, uh, what I now call intuition, was when I started my first business. I was six months pregnant with with Caden, with my, my first son, and I was huge and hot, and it was the middle of the summer. And and I told Josh, my husband, I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna start a business, and I was gainfully employed at this <laughs> point, and so was he, and we were about ready to welcome a child into our family. And uh, so if I don't do it now, I'm never gonna do it. And I knew that. I knew that this was a this is the crossroads as we as, as we talk about here. I, I was at a crossroads, and I got to do that. That's the only path that I really saw. And so at that point, it was really using my intuition and trusting, uh, and, and some of us call it faith, and uh, just knowing that this is the path that I get to take. And when someone would say, "How do you know that?" Naturally, I would have looked to logic to respond to that. Okay, well, wait. Facts, so. Yeah, I'm going to pause you. You're, so you're saying that you're, you're gainfully employed. You're uh-huh. married. You have, like, everything going on, and you're just about ready to, like, welcome a child into the world, which is a full-time job in itself, luckily and gratefully. And you just magically decide, like, with all the things that you already have, you're going to start a business? Oh yeah, it gets better than that. I was uh, I was <laughs> the president of a large organization, like uh, volunteering a large organization for our industry. I was volunteering a ton. Like my schedule was packed, and yeah, I said, okay, I'm gonna start a business. 
And I walked away from so, full time employment. Oh my god! And Wendy, so your husband must have thought you were insane. He totally did. We sat in the family room of our house, and he says, "What if we ever want to take a vacation again?" I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> why, why wouldn't we? Oh, I would. Okay. Yeah, but in his mind, you know, he had so these conversations, and at that time, his risk tolerance was much lower than mine. And all I saw was, okay, it'll be, it'll be okay. And and here's the words that got him, that broke him through to be enrolled in my idea of starting a business. And I said, I've never missed a deadline to date, meaning time deadline, money deadline. I've never missed one. Why would I start now? Hmm. He says, okay. And it was a matter of trust. So we both led into our intuition, but me just knowing I could see the other side of it and knowing that it's, it's okay. The path, you ask me how I'm going to get well, there, I have no idea. And I'll t- what even, like, okay, so let's even back it up just before that, that moment of saying it out loud. What was in your reality that caused you to suddenly say, hey, I'm going to start a business? Like, what occurred? What catalyst occurred? Uh, well, so I always knew that. That was back in college. I knew I was... I was a business owner. I knew I was meant to be a business owner. And I, I don't come from a family of business owners. Uh, in fact, I come from a family of more medical. My dad's a neuroscientist. My mom's a nurse. Uh, I'm actually the least educated in my family. My, I have my sister's a doctorate. My, or my mom and my other sister have master's. And here I am, CPA. I have my, my CPA license. Uh, and don't have a lot of other letters behind my name. So So technically, I'm going into this saying, I don't have a lot of business background, but I knew I wanted to run a business. And so then I went and worked in accounting for two years. And then I went and worked in advertising for two years because I thought advertising seems like a pretty simple business. I could do that. And then I just decided now is the time and it's going to be an advertising agency. It didn't matter what it was because in my intuition, in my in my mind, in my heart, I was going to be a business owner. So whether I run, okay, a, so- run an ice cream shop, coffee shop, it didn't matter. So there wasn't something that wasn't working that caused you to go, okay, you know what? That's not working. I'm going to do this on my own. No. Isn't that uh, that how most people look to start businesses? Absolutely. They see a problem and then they go, well, I'm going to solve it. Or is that, or am I just delusional and thinking that's how people think? A lot of people uh, lose their jobs or are released from their jobs. However that is, they no longer have a job and they think I'm going to start a business until I can find a job. So that's how most so when we see the statistics about how most businesses aren't all around ten years later or they don't make it past the five years, it's because the the intention for most businesses is not to actually be a business. It's just to be a replacement of an income until a job comes. And then there are the businesses that get started with the intention of being businesses. And even then some of those fail. Yeah. That's not a great reason. Like, what would even possess someone to think, hey, I don't have a job. I'm going to create a business until I can find another job. What's yeah, well, I, but think about that, especially right now. I, mean, uh, I started my first business in 2008, so big recession, right right before the recession. And look at what's happening right now with a lot of people being released from employment. And uh, at least here in the United States, the unemployment has shifted where a few months ago you could actually get paid more than if you were working. Now that's not the case. So a lot of people are saying, okay, well, I could go get a job or I could go create some income buy myself some time until I can find the job that I really want. So they go out yeah. there as a contractor or a consultant and they pick up some work, put a little, put a name on the building. It's pretty easy to start a business, uh, but it really would be called a side hustle. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what part of that would they think? I mean, Yes, you're like, essentially you're creating another job for yourself. So they have this intuition that they want to keep going but it sounds like there's something missing missing in the connection of the vision. So we're going to we're going to go off to a break right now in about 30 seconds. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back in and talk about what's in the gap because I feel like t- speaking to those people who think, "Yeah, I want to start a business." And I'm like poo-pooing the idea. Like, "Oh, you you know, you got released from your job and now you're going to start a business. What are you thinking?" But it's not really in a terrible way. It's Let's really dig into that because there's something inside of just that thought alone where you can go so full 
into the possibility of what creating a business for yourself and generating your own income could look like that you could power through and never, ever, ever have to have a air quoted job again. So let's move into a break and we will be right back. If you could wave a magic wand and have your life be anything you wanted it to be, what would it look like? Professional dancer, CEO of a multi-million dollar earth conscious company, a screenwriter with top billing shows, and ultimately have the boldness to move about the world without emotional blocks standing in your way, therefore having the confidence to achieve anything you put your mind to. That's what Wendy Paquette knows is possible for you. The first step is understanding why you don't believe it too, or why you do, and yet haven't created it. Put on your possibility goggles and join Wendy now, because you're at the crossroads to awakening. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Crossroads to Awakening radio show with your host, Wendy Paquette. To participate in the program, call in the U.S. 815 880 8255. Canada, 613-800-8736, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. You are listening to the Crossroads to Awakening show with me, your host, Wendy Pocket, and we're on the Inspired Choices Network, really bringing it. Today, I have my special guest and best friend and most amazing, amazing breakthrough person. She's not only breakthrough in business, in life, and in leadership. In my in my space, when you want to go somewhere, if you're anywhere near Kathleen, you're going there. Because she holds you so high no matter what you think of yourself, that breaking through to the next level is just inevitable. So we're going to jump back into where I left everything before it was we're talk we we're just following the conversation of the energy of the of the work we're speaking into leadership and the secrets into leadership which i believe is intuition it's actually going there without realizing why you're going there but there's a deeper breakthrough in that for everyone that's even considering that so it seemed as though you know i'm poo-pooing that oh you, you got released from your job and now you want to start a business but just to create something to generate money but what if that spark, that inkling to start a business is actually your gateway? What if it's the gateway to bigger, more awesome things, the visions that you've had most of your life in order to step into something amazing? What if that was the gateway where if you really so, got into it, we really sat into it, you could actually move? Go and ahead. Wendy, I'm going to I'm going to pause you for a second because yes, absolutely. I think there's one piece that's so important to all of this and about the vision and it's something that I didn't have 12 years ago and I certainly have today and everybody listening, I want them to see and know what we've got going on so that they have it. And if you hear just how you just came back from that break and lifted me up so high and thank you, I have a big smile on my face. I probably hear my smile on my face. Uh, you see my greatness and I see yours. And yet you and I are the first ones to see whatever stuff. If something's in your way or something's in my way, you and I will be the first ones to call it forward and say, hey, what's that about? And that piece right there of having somebody that lifts you up, sees what's in the way and allows you to step through it, that is critical. If you want to go through a business or you want to get what you want in life, you whatever that is, that intuition piece of like knowing that you've got your back and you've got someone beside you that also has your back, that's a secret 
to success in life, in business, everywhere around you, the relationship that you and I have and are demonstrating right here is a big secret that everyone gets to know and have. Ooh, even more secrets. You know, that's why I said leadership secrets revealed because I knew there was going to be some juicies coming out here. Yeah, I 100% agree. And it's it's funny that you point that out because it's not something I really think about. It becomes a way of being, right? So intuition mm-hmm. is the zone that I play in. That's the game that's, that's always in my awareness and activating that in people so that they can see that. Guess what? Your life, your the the soul of you is speaking to you in every given moment. It's also bringing people into your reality, just like you were saying, that show you who you could be and how, like, open up the door for you to show up fully. But choosing that isn't always easy, right? Yeah, I mean, like, what's people, that like? think, people that see our relationship, they think that, first of all, they think we've known each other forever. And, I mean, you pointed out we've really only known each other for a year and a half, but it's like we've known each other forever because we've, we've you and I have both allowed a space where we can trust and uh, trust each other and ourselves. And it created this relationship that that's deep. And uh, so, so one, having a space where we can open that up, but two, also pe- people see us and think, well, we only hold each other high. We're not going to break through. We're not going to break each other through it. That wouldn't be kind. And yet how many conversations have you and I had that are, <laughs> if anybody else listened, They'd say, ooh, <laughs> she went oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is so true, but I suppose it's just part of part of our journey is always growing, right, and evolving. So the only way to get there is through transformation. And transformation, you know, let's face it, it feels like crap. Like there's no <laughs> there's nothing in transformation that feels good. If you asked a butterfly, hey, what does it feel like to be a blob before you become this beautiful thing? I can imagine if there were words to it, you know, maybe there's no feeling at all. But to me, to dissolve yourself into a blob, to come out as something else, to literally transform, you know, it's got to have some some pain to it, some kind of something yeah. that doesn't feel comfortable. And that's exactly what humans get to go through in order to transform into whatever it is you're after. Like, I, I hear you when you're saying we, we have gone there with each other and held each other high and went, listen, we get to go what wherever is uncomfortable in order to, A, release it from the like depths of the darkness or wherever it's hiding inside your body. Because if it's in there and you know it's there and you're not talking about it, it's never getting out. It's stuck there. And let me tell you, people create diseases so easily. Because what is this? What is that quote? They say you're only you're only as sick as your secrets. Imagine mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you have any secrets at all. Guess what will eventually occur? Like, what could be the the number one cause of illness on this planet? Is the depth of the secrets that you hold, and the the reason I feel like people. I'm, I'm going to ask you this question too. Why do you think people hold secrets? Oh, people, they don't want to, they don't want other people, they don't want the judgment. Uh, yeah. Like their play, they, what they don't see is they are, the judgment is on themselves. There's nothing anyone could ever say that would be worse than what they say to themselves. Yeah, 100%. Pull it out! And so, can you imagine, the, the, if, the more you feel other people will judge you for your secret, that level of fear or resistance is the level of, illness that you could create you know they say there's no there's no like cause of cancers they just kind of show up and yes i i believe fully that they're you know there's all aspects there's mental spiritual what you eat what you believe about what you eat there's all those contributing factors but the number one cause of anything i believe is your brain and I don't say your mind, sure. because I see your mind as a bigger thing, but your brain. And your brain is what causes you to make up the bullshit stories that someone's going to judge you for your secret, and therefore you hide them, right? So it's kind of this, it's this cyclical mess. And why I love leadership so much is because what it allows, what it allowed me to do, and, I, and you can speak for yourself with that too, is it allowed me to access the things that I was that I was afraid of in order to open up to myself 
and to, and to be in that space of transformation, to be feeling mm-hmm. like, oh, man, what have I been hiding from myself that my brain has convinced me of that has caused me to not have the things I want to have <clears throat> in my reality? Tell me what think yeah, about that. And- I'm smiling because of the thing that the space that's opened up for me the most in the space of leadership and, and, and how I've grown in business and, and created why I've created much faster. If I look at my trajectory over the last you know, year or two versus the last 12 years, it's certainly faster the last few years. And the reason for that is the, yes, this space, studying the space of leadership and what it's provided for me is getting over that space of uh, in my mind, I told myself like, I was a lone wolfer playing it by myself and not seeing that the whole world is there to actually support me. If I oh, receive, yeah. if I receive, <laughs> if I'm willing and, and that's vulnerability and yeah, <laughs> lone um, wolf, a lone honestly, wolf here. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Listen, we get to claim recovered lone wolf. <laughs> the fact yes. that we lean on each other as much as we do. I am a recovered lone wolf. I used to believe that I was the only. Listen, I had a lot of bullshit stories. I believe I was the only one who could ever do it myself because I would do it better than anyone else in the way that I wanted it done. So I immediately, with that point of view, cut off every ounce of support I could ever get from everywhere <laughs> when I decided that I was the only one. It, it just really, I've never, you know, now that I look back and see what I created by choosing Lone Wolf, by doing everything on my own, by running my own game, I pigeonholed and cornered and covered myself in crap because there was no way out, right? There was no one there to like say, hey, don't worry, I'll stick out a hand, just grab it and I'll support you and I'll support you, number one thing, in climbing out of that mess. Totally, totally crazy. What What was your lone wolf telling you? Well, I mean, in a lot of ways, like, I had I had some partners in business, and so I mean, yes, I was I was still playing lone wolf in, in business, but I had I had partners, so it wasn't as a parent, but in life, in parenting, uh, and mine was a dangerous space. So what it was telling me was my my husband, you know, he almost died twice in some pretty crazy instances, uh, medical type stuff, and then. Uh, my youngest son almost died. And so what I, what I learned, especially during my youngest son's experience for about, about a year, he almost died about 30 times, uh, again, medical stuff. And what I learned in that time or what I told myself was if I don't control everything, if I don't take care of it, take, if I don't be everywhere for him, he won't make it. And I told yeah. myself that. And so I took him, Wendy, I, I took him to five to seven doctor's appointments a week. Get this, five to seven doctor's appointments. While I had two other kids that were two and four, while my husband traveled 50% of the time, while I was running my business, while I was serving on a national American Advertising Federation board with people that are double my age, so I was the youngest person on the board that required extensive travel for that, while I served on a district board, which was multi-state, and I was involved in that, while I was in, was in the... I ran a Sunday school class and I was volunteering in the community. I I had no time left for me. And I told myself I had to do this. I had to take care. I had to drive him to the five to seven doctor appointments a week or he wasn't going to make it. Wow. So I was pretty thick, pretty thick. Yet my mom was there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. She was, she said, look, just let me know when I can go. And Josh was willing to move his travel schedule around but I didn't want to – I wanted him to have his life, and I didn't want to inconvenience him or my parents or my in-laws who would have happily done any of this stuff. But I didn't want to – I didn't want to make life hard for them, so I just made it really hard for myself. Wow. That, so that's me, a lot of undoing. I mean, can you imagine? So <laughs> talk about Lone Wolf, like what it really looks like. <laughs> yeah. It's all I could think about is the heaviness of how could one human even come out from all of that? Like how could you literally live and come out all of that and get all of that done and still be committed to all of it as I as I know that's a nature that you you were born with and not be dead. Honestly, <laughs> like not have something that literally crushed you like 
that's a lot of, and especially with your kids. Listen, as parents, and all parents, I'm sure know this, you would do, you would die for your kids. Seriously. Yeah. So having to do all of that and run your life, you have, I can imagine that, in, and I'm not going to put words in your mouth, you can correct me if I'm mistaken, you're running everything and keeping everything going because your intention is that your child gets to, to experience the benefit of all of it. So he gets, he can't have a house if you're not generating money for him to live in and he needs a house to live in. He can't have food if you're not generating money to feed him. You know, you got to keep everything else going because when, when, and it was under your determination that he lives, he gets to live in the life that you've created. And so you're not going to let the life that you've created go, right? You got to hold all that up so that you're going to power through as he's going to come through this and then he's going to live in the life that you've created. And not one of those pillars, those those weights would get any opportunity to drop with you in charge because there's no way uh, that you would have it any other way, right? Yeah, what what it was like um, was imagine spinning 50 different plates and each time you just, you've you got to grow arms and you got to keep spinning them. And I'll tell you, uh, so he was born in October of 2012. And in June of 2013, I... Uh, I had a conference that I was going to go to in Phoenix, Arizona. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to go. And I took care of everything. I got all this. I was going to be gone for about three. I was going to be gone for three or four days. So I got everything planned so that nobody else, all they really had to do was just keep him alive. Oh, and he, he had one of those little helmets too that had to be cleaned eight to 10 times a day. He was allergic to the hypoallergenic foam. It's crazy. I wrote about all of this in my book. It's called Joy and Uncertainty. It's, <laughs> you, I mean, you've read it. Uh, yeah, we talked about it's that a, too. Yeah, so I mean, it did these details, it's just, it's an incredible story. And what happened, I, so I planned to go to this, this uh, trip in Phoenix for a conference. And I got to the hotel, the Biltmore. I was super excited, I, but I was really weary about not being there. But this was my first time of saying, okay, life gets to happen without me. They'll be okay. And no kidding, I get to the Biltmore. I see this pool. It's beautiful. I said, I'm going to get in the pool. And I get my swimsuit on and just about ready to get into the water. And my phone rings. And it's Josh. And he says, I don't know what's going on, but I have this, this like weird mark on my hand and there's this red line going up towards my heart. And I'm thinking, holy crap, like, did he get bit by something? This is a big deal. He's, he's got, going septic and everybody at work told him, go to the ER, go to the ER. So he decides to go to the doctor. And this is after, you know, it's just a year after he had had major surgery, almost died, was in the ICU, all the crazy story. Again, that's in the book too. And uh, I say, okay. Well, go to the doctor. Tell me what the doctor says. I look up. I said, I'll see if I can get a flight home. I don't know if I needed to be home or not. Who knows? So I, I go get in the pool for two minutes, and I felt so guilty. Like this is this is what happens when I don't. I left, even though I was going to a conference for work. I left, and so this is my punishment. And uh, he calls me back. I don't, 20, 30 minutes later, and he says, well, the doctor said I should go to the hospital, but I explained that you were out of town, so I'm just going to have my mom come over and help me with the boys, so I'm going home. I'm like, what? So I grab my stuff, put it all in a suitcase, I run to the front of the Biltmore, and uh, <laughs> I grab the taxi. It wasn't even Uber at that point. And I grabbed the taxi, and I was just crying, uh, and I got to the airport, and I checked in. I, I didn't have a flight. I go up to the desk to buy the ticket. She says it's going to be eight hundred dollars, and we'd had so many medical bills. We weren't in a place where we were really worried about money, but it wasn't certainly wasn't abundant. Uh, and I just drew her my credit card and said, "I don't, I don't care. Just eight hundred dollars is fine for a one way ticket, direct flight back." And this guy sat next to me on the plane, and such a kind soul. He listened to me. I talked the whole what, two hour flight. Just I don't even know what I said. But he just listened, and uh, that was a truly a, a point of just breaking down. I think I cried the entire – when I was in the airport, I called my mom, who wasn't even in town. She was in the same town, and it was just a real breaking down point of, wow, life is not working with me, and it's not working without me. Like, something gets to shift, and um, that was a real come-to-Jesus moment. I knew at that point that I was going through all of these experiences for some reason, and the intuition. I talk about intuition, that space, like, there's something bigger here for you. There's a message you're meant to share uh, to the world. And I didn't know what the message was. I didn't know what I didn't know, but I was quickly coming to terms that it was there. 
And it was my Mm -hmm. purpose, mission to figure out what that was and to share that with the world. And so that's, uh, that was a real turning point and it's taken me, uh, taken me, it's been many years where I've explored that concept. And so the book was a, a big piece of just getting that message out there. And it's really about, like, you get to create joy. Joy isn't going to be handed to you. It's, it's this actual choice to create it. And, and that's all leadership. Oh my goodness. So let so your book is called a uh, joy in uncertainty. Yes. Joy and in uncertainty. I got you get to, yeah, we'll find that on Amazon for sure. We get to put the link for that into the uh, the show notes. It's an incredible book. I read it. Of course I read it. And it was amazing. And I, lo- I was like sucked right in. Like I couldn't stop reading it. It was just so, so compelling. But this is an ironic thing as well. I was at that conference you were going to. I was at you it. Were, That's where I was. You weren't at that conference. You were at the next conference so, so that's oh the i was at the next so yes that was in 2013 okay so so i'll i'll share this oh. real quick because this is crazy i know this is how weird it was okay so that was in 2013 and i'd never been to the biltmore i'd never actually that was my first time in phoenix even and fast forward to the end of 2017 i'd, I'd run my marketing firm which is the first business that i started the one i was telling you about when i was pregnant i started a marketing yep. firm and at the end of 2017 i sold that par- that firm to my partner uh, and decided that I was going to figure out what this next business was. I committed wholly to truly understanding and building a uh, business that really supported, supported people, entrepreneurs, uh, and understanding truly what it is that they wanted to create and then creating it, at the, that business coaching piece. Although I didn't have any mechanisms around it, I just knew what the intention was. And so in 2018, I, I committed to really understanding what that was. And in the summer of 2018, I was invited to a conference, a business conference that was no other than at the Biltmore in Phoenix, which is the one you were at. Oh. And I was so excited to go because it was like destiny, like, whoa, full circle. Like I made this commitment. I released like, wow, this is so exciting. I'm going there. And I'll tell you what, the, the week before we left for that conference where you and I were both at, but we didn't know each other the week before, uh, both, all three of my kids came home with strep throat from School. And I thought, oh, it's you know, <laughs> crazy, but okay, whatever. And my dad, who had a major surgery plan, goes into the surgery, and uh, it was supposed to be a month before that, but my, you know, my kids, they were, I think they actually had strep back and forth. They got him sick. So he had the surgery postponed. So now the surgery is like a Monday before it, uh, before I was supposed to leave on a, a Thursday or Wednesday or something like that. I don't know the dates. And then I'd had issues with my piriformis muscle, which is the really tiny muscle between your glute and the hamstring. And I couldn't sit. Like, I stood for like five days. I mean, even to sleep, I was, I kind of slept in a chair. It was really weird. So anyway, I was experiencing all of these weird things. And, uh, and then right before I was getting ready to leave, I finished a big project that I'd been working on. The only project that I carried forward from the work that I was yeah, in my marketing firm. And I I closed it. I had a final meeting and it was the last thing I was going to do. And the next day I was getting on a plane and I was all excited. I left the conference room lit up like, wow, I have, I have arrived. Like, I said I was going to create this. So I did. And I looked at my phone and I had a text from Josh and it said, call me. And it was, it felt cryptic, like get intuition. I knew there was something, there was something beneath that. And I called him and I'm, and I'm driving at this point from this conference room. I was in another town to the hospital to see my dad. And Josh says to me, I think I have cancer. I'm like, oh what the gosh. what? Like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? What? Tell me more. Uh, and it turned out I was so focused on my dad. Oh, and my sister was in town from Chicago for my dad's surgery. And she had some major medical issues that randomly happened while she was here. She had a an allergic bee sting that turned out to be like the size of her stomach. It was crazy. So I was, I was dealing with all of that and my dad and the kids with strep throat and all this stuff at once and finishing up this big project. And, and what I hadn't noticed, I knew Josh was acting a little bit off, uh, but he had noticed a lump in his testicle. And uh, so he went to the doctor thinking, oh, maybe it's not a big deal because it's happened before. And that was on a Monday. And she said, no, let's get you in for on an X-ray or whatever scan they did. And then on Tuesday, he had the scan, and she called back right away and said, we think it's cancer. 
And so we, we're getting you in with a with a surgeon this afternoon. And he called me in between that and said, well, here's what happened. So then he caught me up uh, and we visited with the surgeon that afternoon. The surgeon said, yes, indeed, it's cancer. And here's the craziest piece. We both said, okay, cool. Uh, what are we going to do? Because all the other things we've been through were totally random, like crazy random stuff. And this one, lots of people have cancer. Lots of people have testicular cancer and there's a chartered path. And so we said, okay, well, what are we going to create from this point on? And uh, I went to the conference the next day. We talked about it. And he says, no, go. His surgery was that next Monday. So I went to the conference and I went back to the Biltmore. Even given all of these circumstances that were going on, my dad was in the hospital. The kids had strep. strep Josh was had cancer and was having this major surgery. I mean, all of these different elements that were going on. And I still got on a plane. I went to, to the Biltmore and went to this conference, had a, a phenomenal time, came home. And then uh, we went through cancer treatments for the next few months. Oh when we finished God. that, okay, uh, so then I met you after in leadership. All that, after all those things, you still followed through on creating a business. You still had that intuitive hit that you were to create a business for yourself and lean in. Because right, like at the beginning of the show, we were leaning into the possibility of, I was kind of not poo-pooing, but I was thinking people are missing something. There is a reason why these ideas are popping into your brain. There's, yeah. an, there's a reason why this, in, this inkling pops into your gut where you're like, man, i got to create a business. And you powered through all this craziness. And I mean, most people barely make it through those experiences, let me tell you. I, I watched my mother as, you know, her, I believe it was her, maybe her second husband, I think, um, got cancer. And I watched her whittle down to nothing as she tried to keep everything together. Like literally near crushed her herself just walking through it. I can't imagine having all these things and all these people and all this stuff and still having this powerful knowing this powerful intuition cause you to create a business and follow through on you know jumping into going to a conference which is the one that led us both into the leadership program where we met which is crazy yeah. like super yeah. crazy so you lean yeah. in and what gift do you feel like by following through you can see the pathway that led you there and you can see the path now we're from where you're at. Can you see all the gifts that you were delivered all that whole way up until today? Absolutely. Uh, yes, I would never I wouldn't want to go repeat that. and I wouldn't wish them on anyone. And I can see them uh, so clearly. And when, when Josh was diagnosed with cancer, we made a decision that how we were going to uh, move through cancer wasn't going to be woe is us. We were actually going to be vulnerable and share where we were at to support other people in these journeys. And what I found was that a lot of people, they couldn't, they didn't understand that. Uh, and, and people were so supportive. Like, we were cradle like no other. Our kids were taking care. Like, it was beautiful. And that's because we received. So I told you like, my biggest gift and where I've really grown is in receiving and being open to that, and and that was a that was really um, the start of me learning to receive. Yeah, and knowing I, that. And, you know, sorry, go ahead. The knowing whole, that what? Yeah, yeah. It is the whole world is uh, there to support you if you're open to it. Yeah, and that's leadership. That's leadership, yeah. and there's many distinctions in leadership, as we both know. However, walking into your yourself into your body into your life like really standing in it in you and i say it in your life in you and looking at everything that you've created everything that's brought been brought before you and everything that you're up against and realizing that you yes you are you and you can actually see other people in your reality allowing them to give to you is an aspect of leadership to me because you have, there's a moment where you get to trust yourself, trust someone else, lean on someone else, receive support, and allow yourself to let go of everything for a moment so that you can see that you're still standing. And when you let go of everything to see that you're still standing, that is the one of the moments where 
you can receive. Yeah. You agree? Absolutely. Yeah. And one of the things that you have shared with me, especially over the last few weeks, we've been going through a lot of alignment. Um, just, if, Of course, it would not surprise anyone that we had, you know, until a few weeks ago, six businesses. And uh, and so through all of these experiences with, with COVID, we've released two of them. And, and so, Wendy, one of the things that you said to me was, you you called this forward. So even though it was yucky and messy and we were in the messy middle, as I call it, uh, what I was remembered is we're often given gifts that appear to be covered in poo. <laughs> and we most yeah. of us don't want to dig, dig and uncover the poo to get to the real gift. And uh, I've just gotten over poo. Like, great. So what? It's poo. Put a mask on. <laughs> we're all wearing them anyway. Put some gloves on and dig because it's always there if we're willing to see it. Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, and from my perspective and what I've come to know is you're going to call in what you really want. And if transformation is what will be the vehicle to get you there, then you get to feel the crappy and go through the poo to get there. And you say poo and then you get translated to goo, right? If you are the <laughs> caterpillar turning into a butterfly, you're going to go through the goo stage in order to get to that beautiful, flighted being. And that's not different for anyone. There is no one who goes from A to Z without going through the goo or the poo either way, right? Do you so ever think you're I, not in transformation? No, like, do you ever think never. that there's... Yeah, you're always in it. It could be a daily thing. Like you can really granularize that your experience in it once you get it. So imagine this, right? You and I both have been through like a million ways from Sunday things and transformation. Now we're seeing it everywhere. The cool part is when you first learn what transformation is, what leadership is all about is going through the goo or the poo <laughs> and getting to the other side. It's the leadership that, that allows you to keep standing the whole way. And then it's generally it's in a big space that you discover yourself and then it kind of gets smaller and smaller, it might get bigger a few more times. But then you can granularize that and look at your reality and go, it comes right down to how my days run. Like I go through the who in the morning, if I realized that I, you know, I knew I needed to get up early or I, I you know, I've been on this mission reading Robin Sharma's book, The 5 a.m. Club, which I freaking adore and I'm going to read it again. And we're reading it in the book club right now for the Crossroads Academy. Uh, it's getting up at 5 a.m. and nailing the, your power hour in the morning so that your, the rest of your day is set up with success because your energetic alignment is on point. So waking up early, giving yourself the gift of maybe exercise, meditation, and learning all in the space of an hour, and then going about your day, you've literally set yourself up for success. Going through any goo through your day is simple. And I find if I get halfway through my day and I realize that I'm under it, like there's things I really wanted to do and didn't, it's because I didn't allow myself setting myself up for success in the morning. So I'm in, I'm not in the, so I guess we could look at it this way. The goo is transformation. The poo is looking at it like it's something crappy. Like, <laughs> oh my God, that, like, you know, like, oh my God, I, I'm victim to the poo. If you look at it like the goo, I'm in transformation. I just realized that I didn't actually give myself my power hour first thing in the morning. And that is why I'm sitting in the middle of a mess, not getting anything done. So what do I get to do? It means tomorrow I know exactly where I'm headed. My transformation in that moment, like in a day a day viewpoint, is, man, I, I get to, you know, I had that moment of self beat up, like I know better. And transformation is every single moment that you're willing to grow into yourself and go through that, you know, uncomfortableness of realization that, yeah, I'm human, I'm here, and I get to have choice, right? Choice is always a part of it because I could choose to be a victim to the a million things that are on my plate and or I can choose to look at it from a leadership perspective and realize that I put all that stuff on my plate. I pulled these moments of transformation into my reality so that I can get to the other side as this beautiful butterfly. And to be honest with you, the journey 
it's life itself. Life is from now until the day that I transform through the goo to the other side into something else, an energetic being of some other form that's not in this body. And so every day, every 24 hours that I gift myself to live, I get to live. And if I have to go through the goo a couple times, I'm going to because I realize that the reflective colors on my wings get brighter and more beautiful every time. And if I didn't share that with my friends and my family, I wouldn't be truly living. I'd be still hiding in the space of like lone wolfing my life. How boring that would be, right? Can you imagine if you just decided to like get into the chrysalis and never come out? <laughs> what would your life look like? Well, then you're then you're in the yeah. messy middle, and that's the piece of transformation is that you're you know that something's going to be messy and you're willing to move through it anyway. Yeah. You can't stay. In the it's like being pregnant and saying, but I don't really want to have this baby. It's going to be so uncomfortable. <laughs> I want the baby, but it's going to be really uncomfortable to get the baby out of my body. Like you can't keep the baby in there. The baby's coming yeah, out. Well, that's <laughs> <another option. laughs> I totally hear it. You know, and, and the intuition is the piece to me that reminds you of that you are alive and that you are here and that you have choice and that you have possibility and going through it's it's that piece of intuition is the piece that when you're going through the poo that reminds you that you created the poo and you get to flip it into the goo like you really I mean this they're the funniest words to use but if it supports someone into seeing it differently yeah it's stinky and crazy and yucky and I called it in and if I know me I'm calling it in because something greater is on the other side. So I get to go through it and, and get excited about what's coming my way. And that that piece of transformation, I mean, I don't know. I feel like maybe I went all over the place with everything, but that's what life's really about. It's It's actually going everywhere and nowhere at the same time. And it's how you see it that is what matters. It's how you see your life that matters, right? You know what we should we should have a whole we could do a whole show on uh when you see it and then you have two choices. So the crossroads. You either are yeah. gonna surrender to that intuition or you're gonna resist it. It's yeah. just that whole process of am I gonna surrender or resist? And the resisting is exhausting, but the surrender is so freeing. Yeah. And you get to trust you, like leaning to the trusting of you so that you actually have the freedom that you're after. And for me, it's called inner peace. My biggest vision is that the world lives in, in inner peace because the outside is 100% a reflection of the inside. And if you have inner peace, you have got outer peace. There is no other way. What you see on the outside is what you're being on the inside. So I know we only have a minute and a half left. I want to thank you, Kathleen, for joining me. You're such an amazing best friend, honestly. I, my life, I called you in and I'm so grateful for that. I'm going to own that piece of my responsibility in stepping into transformation was what led us to the space together. And I'm super, super grateful for you and for transformation altogether. I couldn't have been given greater gifts in this space to have my life, my family and my friends in such a position where I can be so joyful so thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm so appreciative of you. You're so and welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks. So you, if you want to join, and Kathleen's in with me in the Crossroads Academy, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a whole community with a brilliant, amazing humans who are going through transformation all the time. They're going from the poo to the goo on a regular basis. And we're having a lot of fun in there, raising our frequency so that we can live in the space of inner peace. So come join us. Hop on over to wendypocket.com and send me a message and say, hey, man, I want in. <laughs> I'm still going to receive founding members at the founding member rate until July 31st. But come play with us in there. Come access the pieces of you and know that you're not alone. And how you know that is by letting go of the lone wolf and playing with us in a space of community so we can all support you and show you that it's so worth being alive. We will see you next week on the Crossroads to Awakening. Thank you, Thank so you for choosing to listen to the Crossroads to Awakening radio show. Wendy Pocket will return next Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We look forward to you joining us again. Until then, 
enjoy your journey and we'll meet you at the